All right, guys, finally we are into the more fun levels of instruction. We're out of those soft skills and the math and all of the theory. Now we're going to get into the practical things. So before we get started, let's see what we're going to learn. So in this, these next few lessons, you're going to be able to describe how to measure voltage, current, and resistance and how they're, it's measured. Um, you won't actually be doing that. We won't get into too much detail, but we're going to we are going to take a look at the different instruments. You'll also be able to identify the different components and HVAC systems on the schematic diagram and, and be able to relate them to what's in the equipment. You'll we'll look at uh, the different types of schematic and wiring di diagrams that you're going to run into while on the job. And then we'll, we'll go in detail about what it takes to complete and make a complete circuit and then understand the state of a schematic diagram. So we'll start on multimeters. Multimeters are also known as volt ohm milliameters and today they also measure temperature, capacitance, clamp on ammeters. Some of them will measure the velocity of the air coming out of the ductwork. So there's a lot of different options out there. This is these are just two basic volt ohm milliameters. These are the this here's a a digital and here is an analog meter. Analog meters are old school. You will not probably ever own one. You might not ever see one. And actually this digital meter here is getting to be a bit old school as well with all the new meters that are coming out. So with your volt ohm milliameter, it doesn't really mat matter which one you have. They all work the same way. And the first thing to note is when you are measuring voltage and in this example this is a 12 volt circuit DC circuit the first thing you need to do is to set your voltmeter to the range that is one range higher than your voltage source so this is a 12 volt DC voltage source so rather than having this at 300 this should be set down here at 20. That's going to give you the most accurate voltage readings. The other thing is, is no matter what you're measuring your, the voltage of, whether it be the battery itself across these different loads here, or if there was a switch in the circuit, if you're measuring the voltage across the switch, it is always in parallel. So you have to put the meter across, the meter leads across the load that you're measuring. Okay, so here's a clamp-on ammeter. This is this is used to measure current for the in the uh, circuit. So, and like I said, this is a this is a separate clamp-on meter. It does have some voltage measurements, but again, you're going to see a bunch of different types of meters out there. Probably the field piece is the one that you're going to be most familiar with. So the clamp-on ammeter. Remember we talked about induction and how when we have current flowing through wires, there's a magnetic field that emanates out from those wires. Well, the clamp-on ammeter has coils of wires that, that run through the meter in this direction, like in this direction, but in this manner, when you close the clamps, it completes that circuit so that that clamp on ammeter will sense the, that magnetic field that is expanding and, tra and contracting right here and then it gives you your amp reading down here very it's a very great tool you'll use this quite a bit so you just clamp it around one of the wires if there's a bundle of wires you can't clamp it clamp the bundle you have to clamp just one wire and that's how you measure the current flow through the wire to the device that you're looking, taking, checking out. And then if you have a smaller amp draw and you're wanting to measure that and get a little more accurate, what you can do is, is you can take and wrap a conductor or wrap the wire around the jaws of your, of your clamp on ammeter. And if you do five turns, then it's going to increase 
the current measured by 5. So if you have a, a milliamp current and you want to have a little bit more accurate reading, you can do 10 turns of wire around your jaw of your clamp-on meter. It's going to measure 10 times more current and it makes it a little bit more accurate. With your meters, when you start to get down into the lower amp ranges and the lower voltage ranges and they get very small, then the accuracy starts to fall off. So you, at, at least with the clamp-on ammeter, you can increase the accuracy by putting turns of wire around your clamps. There are also inline ammeters where you measure in series. So the current flow goes through the circuit through the meter. The meter completes that circuit. Usually this is used for measuring small DC amp draws such as flame sense current or a thermocouple current and so forth. It does require you to disconnect some wires from the circuit and, and plug your meter in series and into that circuit. I know all of these diagrams show resistance in a 12 volt battery but you're going to be using these um, with your HVAC and heating components. So it's usually again it's usually used to measure microamps and milliamps and you will and in the DC ranges and you will have to disconnect your wires to do that do so. Continuity testing. This is when you're testing to see if any if the resistance of a circuit and the uh, state of different switches. And here we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves in our in our diagrams here. But these are three different types of switches in the circuit, and they are all closed switches. And by using your ohm meter, you can measure to see if those switches are in fact closed or if they're open. The one thing when you're measuring continuity and resistance is you want to make sure that the power is disabled. Not only is the switch that applies the power to the circuit is open, that the disconnect that applies the main power coming into the equipment is turned off before you do any continuity tests. The other thing is, is you need to make sure that the circuit that you're testing has been disconnected from the complete circuit as well. So you, you are going to have to remove some wires to do, to do that. So it needs to be a, across the circuit that you're measuring in ohms, power disabled, and you'll be able to measure continuity. And, now, and that is how you do it. We'll get into some more detail in later lessons on that. And again, this is where we talked about never measure the resistance in a live circuit. Pay attention to the voltages off because it'll smoke your meter and they're very expensive. So just make triple check to make sure that the power is off before you do so. Okay, continuity testers. I have never seen an HVAC technician use this, but this is in our uh, textbook. And basically you just clamp the, the alligator clip to ground this goes to the case to ground right here and then you place the continuity tester on or across that circuit and the light lights if there's continuity. I see a lot of automotive technicians use this but I have never seen an um, HVAC technician use this. But it is in our book and you do need to know about it. Okay, megometer or a megger. Very few of us have these. They're usually used at a factory. They put out a really high DC voltage to check usually the windings of a compressor to see if things are beginning to break down or if they have any insulation problems. It's primarily used to check the insulation of a circuit to make sure that, that under high voltage conditions that that insulation isn't breaking down and you're, you're not having issues in shorts to uh, ground when things are running and usually if there, if you have a hundred meg ohms or more it indicates that the circuit is operational and that the insulation is not beginning to break down again you probably will not have one of these use one of these very often uh, I haven't seen it very often that the that you have to 
use a megger on a uh, compressor because if the insulation begins to break down, the compressor usually fails rather quickly. Okay, that's the end of the lesson. Um, we'll move on to beginning to identify some schematic symbols. Again, we'll get into a little bit more voltage measurements here in the uh, some future lessons.